The North Node is in Taurus 8, a sleigh without snow. Alignment with the future. Following a major setback and significant process of letting go, we must look forward to the future with optimism and imagination. What we have managed to learn and earn become the building blocks and resources of a future as yet to be created out of our thoughts. A creative optimist will make something out of nothing. The importance and value of anticipating what inevitable changes are coming. I'll read Rudyard as well. The, um, here we have a combination of two factors. The sleigh, which is a product of traditional skill, and the ability man has to foresee and thus prepare for a future situation. Man should be ready to use past knowledge and skill to meet the demands of a stage yet to come. So as Rudyard points out, there's, there's two major aspects here. The sleigh is not useful unless there is snow, but there is no snow. So what does that mean? Is it useless? Well, not really. It's not useless in two ways. It's going to be useful in future, and so its current use is to reassure us that we are prepared. That's real, in real time. It's like an insurance policy, isn't it? Is that useless because we never collect on it? Would we rather collect on an insurance policy? No, we wouldn't. We, we don't want to collect on it. We, we invest time and money and effort in some situations, just in case. And this is good life management. The second aspect of this wisdom is that even though the sleigh appears useless without snow, something is creative and optimistic. They'll make use of it. It could be a plaything for children. It could be turned into an artwork. It could be a container, a, a carrier of things, a storage place. Who, who knows? It doesn't matter. Now, when we have the situation in our lives which this is metaphorically pointing to, we notice that some things we don't need now, but we might need in the future. And this is a good time to talk about that. There's a category of person in the world called a prepper. They're preparing for the inevitable collapse of society and what will happen if our normal support system breaks down. What can we do about that? And I have two minds on this topic. On the one hand, I don't like for seeing things that I don't want to have happen. I don't like giving things energy if I don't want them. And so I tend not to allow myself to be overly passionately involved in future predictions which are dark. However, when certain things point in a certain direction, it comes to a critical mass where something must happen. It's not, it may happen, it may not anymore. It must happen. And that's the situation we are in now. We don't know exactly how the future is going to be inconveniently difficult compared to the past. But unless you're closed-eyed in this current situation, you must understand that some of us are going to suffer severe inconvenience. In fact, some of us already have through flood and fire and war and refugee status and so on. It's happening. It may not be happening to us, but it's happening to some people. So our ability to prepare for that, to help others, maybe, to help ourselves, maybe, or our family, that ability is a normal quality of the state of being human. If we go back a long time, there were harvests which were good and there were harvests that were bad. And if there's a very bad harvest, we can survive as long as we put something by. We have savings in the bank for that purpose nowadays. And this is all about focusing on this aspect of life. 
The North Node is there, which suggests that this is a spiritual principle we need to learn right now. How to focus on the possibility that we're going to need something in the future. Maybe you need to do a little bit of prepping yourself. Think about what you would most want should the supply line not suit your purposes. If there is no supply of certain commodities like food and water and fuel, for example, but also things that you, you need, tools for the garden, if you have one, and um, electronic replacements and, and so on. Like Whatever it is you need to think about, you don't want to run out of, and it's important to you. Or maybe you need to just get in a spare or two. And this whole idea of um, bodging something, uh, making it into something useful, whereas, whereas on the face of it it's not useful. Repair and make makeshift, um, make things work. When, when we run out of what we want, we're going to have to make things work. And so learning a few skills around that is what the preppers suggest. It's not only on that level, though, of physical need. It's also on the level of psychological need. If you train yourself to need less, you become freer and more powerful. If you need company, then you'll stay in a relationship that's not wholesome for you, whereas the appropriate thing to do is to move on. If you need support uh, from a city-based community, then this will limit your ability to enjoy what the nature has to offer, and so on. So whatever needs you can reduce in order to cope with a future where your needs are not going to be met, the primary thing that you have to do is to center yourself emotionally around that question. The, the greatest danger I imagine that we're going to face in the future will be emotionality. People do very, very stupid things when they're emotional. And if you put that into a group situation, you have hysteria taking hold. And an hysterical mob is destructive. It, it doesn't really do any good. So these are the kind of things that we need to think about. What does the future hold? What can I do about preparing for that? And how can I actually train myself to make do with what I have and to turn it into something more than, on the face of it, it is. Now, of course, the south node is in Scorpio, and it gives a real hint here as to how we might be able to attain that result. Scorpio 8. The moon shining across a lake. Stillness. Passion, whether for outer attainment or knowledge of emotional processes, is an overwhelming distraction and keeps the mind from stillness. It is in calm serenity that love finds its home, and with it comes peace and joy. The idea that we need someone else in order to know love is false, as indeed is the quest for self-knowledge if it is based on the idea that it will produce contentment. Rather, we choose stillness and learn to find it through meditation, and then notice that all else follows. Worldly success, inner awareness, and most importantly, the presence of love, which we see wherever we look. Love is cause, not effect. So is peace. So Scorpio 8 is all about the secret joy of the inner world for those who can find peace through stillness. It's difficult to find peace in today's world unless you look for it. But when you look for it, there is nothing more readily available. It is that simple decision that you must take, not I want peace, but I will have peace, I desire peace, I am at peace. Those more profound affirmations, that's the better starting point. 
And it doesn't come to you without a little bit of effort. You have to learn how to do two things, I would suggest. One is to breathe slowly. You can change your emotional state immediately if you learn how to breathe. And it's not a clever process that you can only do if you're a fakir or a mystic. It's simply breathing in and breathing out slowly with awareness. If you can learn to do that, then you are in control of your emotional state. If not breath, then walking. If you're in an emotional state, go for a walk. It cannot survive. The emotional state cannot survive a long walk. Especially vigorous up a mountain in nature. That kind of walk does the best job. The second thing is to distance yourself from the triggers of stress. If a person or a situation inevitably causes you stress from time to time, there's a good chance it's wrong. It's wrong for you. You have to put up boundaries, strong boundaries in your life to make sure that nobody draws you into their shit. Even a boss. If a boss dumps his emotions on you, refuse it. Learn how to stand up for yourself. Resist that kind of pressure. 